When we are trading or when we're working toward any task really, we tend to be in one of two states. I like to think of it like we are split personality traders. Now the first state, and we can call this the correct state, is the one where we are making good rational decisions. The second state is the one that we tend to be in when we crash and burn. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at both of these states and explain what is going on. And then we're going to look at simple ways to help make sure that you stay in the correct state when you are trading. Now, when we are in the first state, this is when we tend to feel calm. We're making rational decisions. We're thinking critically. The frontal area of the brain is more active. Now this tends to be the state that we want to be in in most of modern society. However, the second state is when we start to become more emotional. So if you think about emotional trading, and what happens here is just behind the frontal area of the brain is the limbic system. Now when this activates, it tends to be because we sense some sort of danger or we get fearful. And when it starts to activate, we start to think irrationally because our emotions are controlling what it is that we are doing. Now, think about when you are driving a car. You know where you're going, you're stopping at red lights, you're going when you see green lights, you're using your indicators, you're following all of the rules, you're using the frontal area of your brain. And then a car cuts in front of you and you have to slam on your brakes. Now, if you are thinking rationally, it's a little bit of an inconvenience. Maybe you got a little bit of a fright, but you press your brakes, no harm done, you can get on with your day. However, what tends to happen most often is because we get fearful and we get angry, the limbic system starts to spark up. Now, unfortunately, the limbic system dominates the frontal part of the brain when it starts to activate and it becomes much more difficult to think rationally. And what happens? You start to get very angry, you start to press on the horn, you start to shout, you start to swear. And in extreme cases, you can end up pulled over at the side of the roads and you see people fighting. They're fighting because someone pulled in front of them and they had to press their brakes. And it's because they're no longer thinking rationally, they are thinking emotionally. As a trader, this can be devastating. If you've been trading for any length of time, you know when you hit an emotional trading period, you suffer huge losses. Now what tends to happen is you have those losses and then after the fact, you sit back and the frontal area of the brain starts to kick back in and you think to yourself, what the hell did I just do? Why was I making those decisions? I wasn't doing anything rationally. I was just pressing and pressing and pressing. I had fear of missing out. Then I tried to chase my losses. I was selling the lows, I was buying the highs. And you don't really understand what happened, what took over, and it's because you were emotional. Your body was sensing danger, it was sensing fear, and it was reacting the only way it knew how, which is obviously counterintuitive to what you need to do as a trader. So another quick example would be if you are at a, a football stadium, you're sitting next to your best friend, you're talking, how's your week gone? How's work been going? How are your kids? Do you have any summer holidays planned? And then the game starts and you turn and you start watching these players and maybe the opposition scores. And then a couple of decisions go against your team. What tends to happen? You get angry, the fans shout, the fans scream. They start saying things to the opposition players, screaming at the top of their voice. They would never say in a million years if they bumped into them in the supermarket. And it's because they are reacting emotionally. They're no longer thinking critically. The limbic system has taken over. Now in a football stadium, that is a healthy outlet for your emotions. And that's why people love to go to watch sports games because it lets them break free. It lets them be emotional. It lets that part of their brain exercise. They don't have to worry about anything. However, when you're sitting at the charts, it is not healthy. And when that starts to come forward, when it starts to dominate, you start to lose money. So how do we deal with this? How do we take back control? How do we stop the limbic system making our decisions and causing us to have loss after loss after loss? Think about a trader in a bank. 
he gets given huge sums of money. He sits down at his computer or her computer, starts trading, starts getting emotional, starts making mistakes after a loss. Does all of the money that they've been given just drain away? No, they have oversight. Their manager is always at their shoulder. Maybe not physically at their shoulder, but they have a computer system which tracks what's going on and they know the signs of emotional trading. And when they see it, the breaker comes down. They just shut them off because they know that they can't just go over and say to them, you're making silly decisions, calm down, and then let them continue to trade because they know that they are no longer thinking rationally. They are reacting emotionally. So what they have to do is have safeguards. And if the losses start to pile up over the next couple of days, they'll just take them away from the trading desk for a week, two weeks, a month. A lot of them get sent to psychologists to talk through what's going on, to try and bring them back into their rational decision making. So how does that help you? Well, first of all, it shows you that it happens to everybody. It's not just you. You can also implement some sort of oversight. Now, I'm not talking about someone standing over your shoulder and saying, okay, stop trading, you've made a mistake. But your partner or a family member who's very often in the house, if you have that benefit, use it. They might not have any idea how to trade, but you know how to trade and you know exactly what happens when you start to go into these emotional trading um, periods. So you can look at your profit and loss and you can show it to your partner or your family member and you can say, okay, when I go into bouts of emotional trading, it usually happens after two losses in a row. Or if I've had five trades in a single day or more than five trades, it's because I've been emotional trading. If I'm trading normally, rationally, I would never take that number of trades, whatever it may be. And then you say to your partner, if you see this, we're gonna sit down at the end of every day, if you see this on my P&L, you shut me down. Take the power cord out of my computer, or you, you have the password to my trading account and you ban me from trading for a day, or you ban me for trading for a week in severe instances. Now, how do you know if you need that type of extreme oversight? Well, if when I said they are going to stop you for tra from trading for a week, your initial thought was, oh, yeah, I like his ideas, but a week seems a little bit extreme. If I've had those kind of losses, I can just get back to it and I can make my money back quickly. If that's the thought process you're having, you need extreme oversight. You already know in your head, if you think rationally, that when you go into these emotional periods, all that happens is you damage your trading accounts. And eventually, you're gonna damage it in such a way you're not going to be able to continue trading. Your account will be gone. You'll not have enough money to refund your account. That will be it over. So install the oversight. Have your partner step in or your family member step in. Have them be the manager in the bank that the bank has to have because they know they can't just rely on the individual because they get emotional. It's a really, really simple way to do it. Now, if you don't have maybe quite as extreme reactions. Um, you can have a couple of different things that you do. I'll tell you what I do personally. I noticed that when I'm trading, after I have a loss for the day, I am prone to then drop uh, my sort of performance levels. If I've had a loss, I am more likely to then make a mistake which will lead to another loss. I just seen it over time when I was learning. So what I brought in was a circuit breaker. After I have a loss, I don't just sit at the computer because after I have a loss, I start to feel emotional. I get pissed off. I get frustrated. I want to make the money back. So what do I do? I just get up from the computer. I go and make a coffee. I go and sit in a different room. I don't look at charts. I'll put the news on my phone, Facebook. I'll scroll through Facebook. I'll read a chapter of a book. Anything that allows the emotional response to start to die back down again and for the critical thinking to start coming back forward. And then when I feel okay again, it's usually five to 10 minutes, that's what I spent. Five to 10 minutes, I come back down and I can trade again. Now, if I then have a second loss, I'm done. It doesn't matter. I know through experience, after two losses, the, the percentage of times where I then make that money back rather than continue to make mistakes is so small that there's no point in me continuing to trade. So my rule is, after one loss, I have the break. If I have another loss, I take my dog out for a walk. The computer gets turned off. No matter what happens, I push away from the desk, it's off, my dog gets the lead on and out I go, that's it. 
Now, sometimes if I feel after I've had the one loss and I've had the break, if I still feel frustrated, I know that I'm not recovered. So I'll just decide to stop for the day. I'll take my dog out after one loss. I'm being overly cautious. I'm not being, um, it's not like I'm too scared to come back to the computer. It's that I know that I'm not in the right frame of mind to trade effectively. And I know if I sit down at the computer, it's not the right part of my brain which is going to be making decisions. It's the incorrect part of my brain. And if it's the incorrect part of my brain making decisions, I shouldn't be trading. So all you need to do is look through your results or just think back to when you get emotional, when you start making mistakes, when you can spot the recurring themes, maybe it's after one loss, maybe it's after two losses, maybe it's a certain day, whatever it is, after a certain time when you're starting to get tired, whatever it is, you have to have breakers that come down as soon as you start to get those emotional responses. Because when you get those emotional responses, you are no longer in control. Lots of areas in your life, you will have had these reactions. Think to a time when you're talking to your partner and then all of a sudden you're arguing and the arguing turns into a screaming match or you're doing it with your best friend. That's because you're no longer using the frontal area of the brain, it's the limbic system. And how often when you're having these blaring arguments, does it get resolved in a rational way? And how often does it lead to you both storming out and being frustrated at each other for a long time? You have to understand your weakness as a person and you have to build safeguards around that to help you trade effectively. So those are the split personalities of trading. We all have them. That's what tends to happen when we go from one state into the other state. And those are some of the tips that I suggest you start to use to help you remain in the correct state. And when the limbic system starts to take over, it's the safeguards to stop you from trading emotionally. Okay guys, as always, I hope that was helpful. I hope you're all having a great trading week. I'm James Orr and thank you.